Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from a beautiful location in the southeastern part of the United States. Today's topic is going to be communication versus talking. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So when you're in the narcissistic relationship, was there communication? There wasn't. Was there talking? There was. Were you ever heard? Were you ever getting your message across to the narcissist so they could actually help you move forward or help you plan or help you grow? Or did they actually ever listen to you and pay attention to you? Or did they have one of their smartphones and were they texting? Were they telling you things like, yeah, in a minute, I'll get there. I'm busy. You know, we'll talk about it later and things like that. Or maybe just give you a little bit of recognition for what you're trying to communicate and perhaps they would acknowledge that, but would they ever take action on it? No, it would go out the window. It would not be adhered to, it would not be listened to. It would be basically blown off or treated as if it didn't matter. And then when it was the, the time for the narcissist to communicate with you, would they ever communicate? Not really. They would be talking down to you or dictating things or telling you how things need to be or telling you how things need to change basically structuring the way you communicated. Communication is not a strong part in the narcissistic relationship on the narcissist's behalf. Remember, they don't like to communicate. What they like to do is they like to control the narrative. Example, the smear campaign, what is that? That's right. It's something that's been going on throughout your relationship and it certainly was ramped up post-narcissistic relationship ending and or the discard. That's when the smear campaign was fully underway. What were they doing? They were talking to everybody possible, painting you in a not good light. Let's put it that way. They were making up lies. They were making up untruths. They were manipulating the narrative and they were talking as fast as they could to anybody who would listen. What were you trying to do during that period of time? You were trying to communicate, most likely with the narcissist back then because you thought that that person or those people would have the answers to the questions you had. In other words, you were looking for closure. You were looking for solutions. You were looking for the path that path was a dead end road. It was meant to go nowhere, just like every narcissistic relationship. Keep this in mind, every narcissistic relationship benefits one person, which is not you, it's the narcissist. And they are all destined to implode. They're destined to not succeed, because why? Because the narcissist doesn't know how to communicate. What they know how to do is to behave in a self-serving fashion and to talk a good game to make it seem like they are on top of the world or that they know all the answers or that they have all the solutions or that they're they're enabled. In other words, meaning that they know more than you do, that, than you know. They don't. They never have and they never will. Remember, the narcissist is nothing but a person who is dictating messages to you, but they're, they have no original ideas or thoughts. They need to steal from unsuspecting individuals like yourself or myself, and they need to mention very little about what your your attributes are. In other words, the goodness that you possess. That's why many times when you are in the narcissistic abusive cycle post love bomb slash euphoric stage, and you are now in the devaluation stage, that's why you're working so hard to do what? That's right, to communicate with the narcissist because you want to have your voice heard. You want to actually let them know what you're thinking, what you're experiencing, how you're feeling, what your goals, dreams, aspirations are. What does the narcissist want to do? They don't want any part of that. They want you kept in the narcissistic fog, which is the devaluation stage, and they want you spinning around on that hamster wheel working for them. They don't care about what you think, what you want, because why? Because the narcissist will do whatever they want. That's how they live their lives. And again, communication is not a skill that they are actually good at. It's talking. It's talking a good game. That's why I notice many times when you have identified who, who a narcissist is, this isn't all the times, but many times, they're the loudest voice in the room. They really are. Or they're the person that needs the most attention. Or they're the person that needs to disrupt events. That's how they live their lives. They live their, they live their lives by extracting resources from unsuspecting individuals like yourself. And it's not until you get the wisdom on channels like mine and many others, and again, thank you very much for being here, that you understand throughout the whole relationship with the narcissist, there was never communication there. There was never understanding. There was never growth. There was never, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I apologize. You're right. 
let's work on this together. It was none of that. It was the narcissist talking to you and telling you what they would or would not do. But there was no communication. Remember, what is communication? Communication is a two-way street where two individuals communicate. In other words, example, one person says something, the other person listens, and then the other person communicates back to the other individual. It's like a tennis match going back and forth. And when you have a healthy communication relationship with, with an individual, in other words, there is healthy communication in a relationship with somebody, that's beautiful, that's rare. That's something you need to hold on to and cherish. But is that a narcissistic relationship? Absolutely not. The narcissistic relationship, it surrounds, it, it is built upon lies, deceit, destruction, manipulation, and devastation. And it is built on a house of cards. And the narcissist knows this. You didn't know it at the time. You thought you were entering a loving, kind, healthy relationship or a, a great business relationship, or you thought your neighbor was a healthy individual. None of these things turned out to be true, did they? They didn't. And the reason why is because there is no communication with a narcissist. All they want to do is paint people in the light that they see them, which is either black or white. There's no such thing as a gray area with a narcissist. Keep that in mind. Now, let's flip the coin. You're in a healthy relationship with whoever it is. Imagine, if you will, who that person is you're thinking about. That communication is in a flow state, I'm sure. It goes back and forth, like the tennis match I mentioned. And communication there, it's, it doesn't have to be uh, arranged. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to schedule it. Example, okay, let, let's sit down and have a meeting at four o'clock on, on a Saturday. No, you just, you communicate. In other words, hey, I'm going to the store, I'm grabbing something. Do you need something? Oh, sure, yeah, can you pick me up this? It's just such a flow state, it's natural, it's beautiful. With the narcissist, how is the communication? Um, there isn't any. It's one person, the narcissist, talking out of both sides of their mouth and many times telling you false truths or untruths. We know that now because I mentioned the smear campaign. But the point is, is these people, these individuals, they just go through life blowing up relationships, businesses, families, marriages, brother, sister, sibling relationships, everything, friendships, huge, huge things. And they, in the wake of their path of destruction, <coughs> excuse me, what do they do? They're not gonna introspect. They're not gonna be accountable. They're not gonna communicate that in fact they did do things that weren't good. Never, not gonna happen. That is exactly why they have little groups and groupies of friends. That's exactly why they jump from person to person, business to business relationship to relationship, what are they looking for? They're looking for unsuspecting individuals who will tolerate their poor behavior and who will not have the wisdom on the narcissistic abusive cycle. So communication versus talking. Remember, you can talk all you want to, uh, but actions speak louder than words. Remember, remember that, it's a very famous quote and it's completely true. So going back to the narcissistic relationship, how many times did they future fake? How many times did they blame shift? How many times did they gaslight you? How many times did they stonewall you because they knew that you were telling the truth and they, they didn't wanna hear it? How long did you endure the smear campaign? How long did you endure the silent treatment? How many times were you triangulated? How many times did you doubt yourself? How many times did you not believe in yourself? How many times did you actually have to take notes about the relationship because things were happening to you that were so not natural, so not normal that you're like, something's wrong here and I don't know who to talk to, I'm not sure. I need to communicate this with somebody but I don't know who to communicate it with and I certainly can't talk about this individual who turns out to be the narcissist, so I will take notes. Maybe you journaled, maybe you took notes on your smartphone, your laptop, your desktop, your tablet, whatever, and you did it. And then you, you look back after the relationship was ended, has ended, or after a couple, a period of time, and you said to yourself, oh my gosh, these notes, that's, that's a narcissist. What is this? I didn't even know what that, that, what that word meant. I just thought it was a person looking at themselves in the mirror all day long. No, that's not the case. The case is the toxic narcissist is an individual, it's a parasite who wants to steal from you. They want to steal your energy, your love, your empathy, all of your resources, your financial resources, certainly. And it is so true post-narcissistic relationship if you really reflect back when you're in it. Was there ever communication? No, there was manipulation. But yet, let's, let's dig into that for a moment. When you met the narcissist, what did you do most likely? You communicated all about yourself, your history, your past relationships, your upbringing, your childhood, the schools you went to, your business relations, perhaps even your financial resources. All these things that are in the past, it's done now. But what did the narcissist do? 
they kept you talking and talking and talking and communicating and communicating. And when it was time for them to share what their history was, did you ever get truths? No, you got half-baked responses that may or may not be true, but all you got was talking. You never got communication. What you got was an individual who was watching you consume their words, and then they would spin it the direction of your emotions, of, of exactly how you were feeling. And then right when you were asking them more and more questions, what did they do? They shut it off, they changed the topic. And then you just let it go, and you ignored a red flag or didn't trust your instincts or intuition. That's how the narcissist wants you. They want you out of the love bomb slash euphoric stage into the narcissistic fog slash devaluation stage. That's where they want you. That's where the narcissist thrives. That's where the narcissist finds your replacement. That's where the narcissist no longer has to communicate with you. That's where the narcissist wants you isolated and just to become an extension of themselves. It's a sick, twisted game, but it's real life. If you haven't experienced narcissistic abuse, consider yourself fortunate. If you have, my heart goes out to you. You know what I'm talking about. Drop comments below. The point being, communication is a two-way street that is reciprocal and it benefits both parties. In other words, right now, you are consuming my wisdom and my experience and insight and my hope is you're gonna drop comments in the comments section below and share your insight, wisdom, experiences with the channel. That's called communication. It's not about who has the loudest voice or who has done the most things or who's achieved the most. Who cares about that? What matters is that you are getting the wisdom and that you can communicate freely with individuals who are not narcissistic. That's the path. That's exactly what you must do. So my point is this before I close the video out. If you're in a toxic relationship, my hope is you're looking to exit it. If you're already out, God bless you. If you're doing your best and you've already healed and processed things or you're on the healing path, again, my heart goes out to you. This is beautiful. The whole point is each and every day you need to be making progress moving forward each and every day and communication on this planet called earth is vital it's huge we need proper communication in any relationship we developed develop develop and the reason why that is is because when you don't communicate your knowledge or your experiences or your opinions or thoughts then number one you're not heard but number two you don't benefit you don't grow what you do is you become alone you feel isolated just like you did in the narcissistic relationship communication is vital and to say what you want, when you want. That's powerful, it's beautiful. On the other side, talking, anyone can talk. You know, you go on a bus, an airplane, you go to an event, whatever, and you hear people talking. I get it, people are talking, that's great. But there's a big difference between communicating and talking. Many times people talk to be heard. Why? Uh, that's for a different video. But when you're communicating, it means you're choosing your words wisely, you're using them appropriately and you are sharing is the wisdom and or information with another individual. Communication is paramount. It's absolutely how this planet continues to move forward. But talking, no, talking, like there's no room for talking. And when you were in the narcissistic relationship, that's all you did. You consumed the narcissist talking and the berating and the lies, deceit, destruction and manipulation, the future faking and the silent treatment and the ghosting, stonewalling, that list goes on and on. That's why my hope is you've gone no contact, blocked the narcissist, removed all fly monkeys and people associated with them and you're moving forward and beginning to live your best life or you're living your best life right now. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from beautiful Southeastern United States. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great evening. Stay true, stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand there is a huge difference between communication and talking. It's huge. If you're communicating, it means you're speaking when there is something of value or importance to say and you want to share your wisdom or insight with another individual. If you're talking, that's just talking. You're just talking to be heard or perhaps, like I said, it's for a different video. Talking is really not uh, that beneficial, I believe, when you're trying to communicate something with an, an, an individual and they're not listening to it. That's why we have moved forward and we're putting the narcissist way in the past. So guys, God bless you. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. I love you. Have a great evening. Continue to believe in yourself. Continue to communicate. Continue to be heard. Continue to live your best life and move forward. Continue to invest in yourself. And remember, if not now, when? Take action. You are in control of your destiny. You are in control of your path. The narcissist is in the rear view mirror. We are now moving forward, living our best lives. We don't have to listen to an individual talk and perhaps not keep their word or talk just to be heard or talk to disrupt your day.
now communication is of the utmost importance. God bless you. I love you. You are not alone. I will talk to you tomorrow. Good night.